Hi, everybody. This is going to be a tour of the player home, uh, Riverwood Keep. It's a mod. And uh, we'll start out, uh, I guess, with the uh, stables, which is right out the entrance and to the left. Over there is the two horse stables. I usually keep Frost and Shadow Mirror here. Of course, they're not here right now because this is a new playthrough. But uh, you, you guys, you got a place for two horses. And of course, there's Riverwood Bridge and Riverwood itself. I'm also using JK's uh, Riverwood mod to improve that uh, little town. As you come up to the entrance, you have two guards here. They are both marked essential, so they can't die. But they could enter a bleed out state. And we'll come in here. We also have a guard up there in the walkway. And we'll head up there. To get up there, you have to go through this door, which basically ends up teleporting you up to the walkway. There's nothing else up there except the little walkway. So I never go up there, but I'll show it to you. Sorry for the longer load times. So I'm currently running over 3,200 mods. So loads sometimes are a little slow. And here you could see uh, that airship over there. That's right outside of White Run, and that's a mod. It just you can't do anything with it, but it's kind of neat to look at. And this guard up here is also marked essential. In fact, all the NPCs in this castle are all marked essential, so none of them can die. And we'll head back down. I like this mod home because of the location. You have a lot of beds. So you have a lot of room for followers. And I will usually fill this place up almost to capacity with followers at the end of a playthrough. You have all the workstations here as well. And coming over here, you have the training dummy, which is, you know, of course, uh, for our bows and arrows or crossbows. In this door, we won't go into it yet. Uh, it goes to the tower. And we'll uh, tour that at the end of touring the main keep. Now here's a planter over here, which you can plant your plants in. If you're interested uh, about the music, yeah, it's the Witcher music. I've changed out uh, all the sound files for the Witcher game music. I think it fits Skyrim pretty well. Except for the keep. I didn't switch out their sound files for the keep, so the keep sound files would be a little more vanilla. But I think Witcher fits fits uh, Skyrim pretty well. And there's her other guard out here. And she's also essential, of course. And then we got one more... Up top, I think, up in here somewhere. Um, I don't see her. But uh, it also watches over the keep, so you have a total of five guards. What I like about the guards here is that even if you're in trouble on the far side of Riverwood, they will run and come to your assistance. And we'll go into the main keep. Once it loads, of course. Come on in. Just stoke the fire. Take a seat and get the cold out. And you'll get that uh, statement every time you come in here. Here's our house, Carl. There he, of course, she's also a marked essential. Again, and she can be a follower if you so choose her. You get a throne here. If you sit in it, you'll get the throne animations. Long life to you, Thane. And over here is her, her cook, and he's a vendor. He sells food items. You get an oven. Fine. And you got a cooking spit, so you can actually cook your uh, food here. 
And you got some storage over here. Uh, and no, you cannot pick up those sweet rolls I've tried. That's kind of unfortunate, I think. It's just, so I guess it's just decoration. You also have two thrones here that if you sit in, you will also get the uh, city, the throne sitting animations. This over here is our resident bard. She'll sing songs if you uh, so choose her to. In fact, you can ask her. Oh, well, she's eating, so I'll leave her alone. And this door here goes to the tower as well. There are several ways into the tower, which is uh, kind of cool. You don't have to travel to a specific spot to uh, go into the tower. And we got four rooms on this side. Four rooms on that side. They're all the same. So you have a total of eight beds, which you can use for followers. Now the pool here, it'll auto strip uh, NPCs and you, but there is a way to turn it off. And I'll show you how to do that a little farther into the uh, video. Okay. Ah, she moved. Yes? Can I make a request? Sure. What can I do for you? Do you know the age of aggression? Only true Imperials request that one. Okay. We'll let her sing a song for us. And uh, if you're interested in, uh, about my character, curious about my character, she I'm using the UBE body. And she has the uh, Siri face preset. To our youth, to the now, I gave her black hair because I wanted her to have more of a, a darker look because I plan to run her through this, this playthrough as a vampire. And, and I've got her in the uh, Witcher armor. And of course, she has the Witcher swords. Take back our home. Down with Ulfric, the killer. Okay. On the day we continue on. And we'll sing. We're the children of Skyrim, and we fight all our lives. And when Southern Guard beckons, every one of now us. Now, over dies. here, this is just the uh, entrance to the stairwell. It goes up to the second and third floors. And, we'll and but we'll use the other set of stairs on the other side. All right, if you go to the left of the main entrance, right there, you will uh, come into the uh, area and you have an ar arcane enchanter and you have an alchemy station over there. Both these girls are vendors and they sell items that are, uh, uh, that are useful in this area. And you got plenty of storage here as well too. You got a desk that has storage. You should keep potion recipes here. And I'll keep the potions there. Because that's how I do it. And down we go. And over here, we have our blacksmith. He's also a vendor. And he's also marked essential. You gotta get all the, everything you need down here. Grinding stone. You have a forge. Um, you have a workbench. Tanning rack. And a smelter. And we'll continue on over here. The basement.
I played this game at 4K and 60 frames a second. I wasn't able to record it at 60 frames a second, but I did record in 4K, but I was only able to record at 48 frames per second. Uh, if I try to record at 60, uh, the video is very choppy, so I'm not really exactly sure why that would be, since I game at 60 frames a second. But, um, so I had to reduce the frame rate. And you got four beds on this side for followers. And then, and storage over here, of course. And then the other side over here, you also have four more beds. So it's a total of eight here. And as you see, they'll look the same. And over here, so now, now we're up to 16. Oh yeah, she's a vendor as well. She sells food and drink items. All right, here we go. And over here, Get a uh, little area, which is kind of neat. Uh, those uh, big vats there, you can't, you cannot interact with them, which I think kind of stinks. I wish you could. And over here, you got one bed, so we're up to a total of 17 right now for followers. Over here is just a storage room. Nothing really much to see in there. And this ladder here leads up into the tower as well from the basement. And that's about it in here. And we'll continue on out. And on over. Now this is kind of like a little cave area. Um, I think it's kind of neat. And you do have another pool here you can swim in. And of course, it's the same as the pool upstairs. You'll auto strip if you go swimming in it. So. All right, let's head up to the second floor now. I'll hurry her up a little bit. I really don't uh, like running around, just constantly running into my videos. To me, when I watch a video and the player is just constantly running, it's a little bit distracting for me. You can't really see a lot because of the uh, changing fields of vision. So I prefer to walk. In videos. All right, second floor. Yeah, here's the second floor. To the right here, you got some more planners you can use. I think there's 10 here. There's plenty of... Uh, uh, pots with fertile soil in it in this castle so it makes it very handy to grow whatever you need for, for materials and in here this door leads out to kind of a neat little balcony area Here we go. Yeah, if you see, it's it's kind of pretty here. Look over this way. 
Um, of course, High Hothgar is up there. You can see uh, Dragon's Reach. And you can see the beginnings of White Run. And I don't see my airship. I guess it's over there hiding somewhere. Oh, there it is. You can kind of see the airship from here. All right, enough here. And uh, I'm using the uh, Majestic Mountains mod. Uh, so the mountains look a lot better. Also got the weather mods. Um, true storms. And so when it rains, it'll thunder and lightning will start the ground sometimes. I got uh, mods that improve the rain, improve the snow. I've changed basically all the 2D objects over to 3D. Welcome. Everything's up at 4K resolution. Uh, and very high poly counts. And over here is a little bar area. And that girl over there, she's also a vendor. And she'll sell drinks and food items. And there's a little house coral over there just hanging out. All right, let's go to the third floor. And... Every single city in my game has been changed. I've improved all of them. Solitude now is a proper capital city, as so as well as Windhelm. Uh, even the small villages have, have all been improved. I didn't leave any village or any town or any camp untouched. All right, this is uh, where the master bedrooms at. We'll start over here. Of course, it's a double bed, so if you get married, your spouse will sleep in the, the bed next to you. And uh, this is usually where, generally where I keep all my armor and any items I want to keep kind of close by or, or I don't want to get lost in the castle or by me forgetting where I put them. You get a little bath here and no, you will not auto strip in this. And then over here, you got these two green buttons up here behind the plants. Uh, the one, uh, this one will activate and deactivate the uh, auto undress at the pools. And this one will activate or deactivate the NPCs. So if you don't want the NPCs here, um, you just hit that and they'll all disappear. Which to me, I think is kind of boring plus I like the vendors and I like the assistance from the guards uh, around the keep so I just leave it activated and over here is the children's room there's uh, six beds so if you have the multiple adoption mod where you can adopt more than two, two kids you um, have the space for up to six I usually just uh, adopt a girl out of White Run, and then I'll adopt the Flower Girl in Windhelm. I put them here, I think, once. I usually put them in Proud Spire Manor in Solitude. And we'll come on up to the fourth floor. Any little bar here. And she'll sell you drink items as well. And you can kind of look down here to the area we're just at. This is a loft. Now, there's no beds up here, but it's kind of neat. There's a lot of planters. You can plant like, I think it's up to 18 uh, plants up here. And there is a pool up here. Alright, and over here to the right, 
is our pool area, and you will auto strip here if you uh, go swimming. Unless you got it selected off uh, on that with that switch in the bedroom. And here's all the planters. Uh, each one you can plant up to three plants. There's none on one side, none on the other. And that's about it up here. Modder who made this mod is it's pretty amazing. He's put a lot of detail into it. This is definitely a proper castle. It's very fitting for the Dragonborn. Though, I use the alternate start mod. And I got some other mods too, where I do not have to play as Dragonborn if I choose not to. I always end up playing uh, through, uh, but usually towards the end of my playthrough, I'll uh, take care of the quest at uh, Castle Volkahar and all those and all the quests in all the cities, and I'll save uh, the Dragon Quest to last. Now, here's all your shrines. The only one you don't have is Moloch Ball, I'm pretty sure. Yep. You don't have him. But you can but but you have him at Castle Volkahar. Now here's some areas to put some uh, things that you collect uh, during questing. Now on your travels you can put all your necklaces up here. And then over here um, let's start over here. You have a bookshelf. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you got a desk with storage. You also have all these to display the items that you pick up during questing. And uh, I always fill this up by the end of the playthrough. And here's all your jars. I have never found all of them. They're just randomly, you find them randomly out in Skyrim. I've gotten most of them before, up to four, I think. I didn't get the last one. Yeah, I got a bookshelf here. This is where you put all your treasure maps that you uh, find uh, during your travels across Skyrim. Here's a spot for all your black books and the scrolls. What, well, once you're done with them. And we'll come on down here. And this is the library. You get a lot of book space, a lot of bookshelves. So you have plenty of room for all the books that you can collect out in Skyrim. And uh, these are for unique items. This is all the journals. And uh, here's all the other books that are unique. The same over here. Okay. Uh, so now we'll head on into the armory. All the uh, door over here, I have the crosshairs on. That also leads into the tower. If you ever do a, a vampire playthrough, I recommend getting the uh, mod Cold Haven. It's a vampire city uh, located underground. They have an inn, restaurants, bars, vendors. It's, it's pretty cool. And there's quite a few quests down there too as well. And you can get a player home. Okay. Here's where you can put all of your unique weapons at and display them. And down here as well. I think this is for Wolf Threat. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, Wolf Threat, the sword. And over here, you get a space for all your claws and your paragons that you get uh, in the Forgotten Veil to access the different treasure rooms. So, and there you go. All right. I'll head up here. Then over here, 
is where you put Ariel's shield. I usually keep Ariel's bow with me, and I have Serana give me a uh, blood-drenched uh, arrow so I can black out the sun occasionally when I get bored. It is kind of fun to go into the city and uh, shoot a, a uh, blood-soaked arrow into or blood-cursed arrow into the sun to blacken it. And then vampires will start appearing and attacking people. Something to do if you get bored. And a spellbreaker, and which other areas to display the things that you get. Um, and all the rings. And we'll come over here. We got a lot of mannequins up here. Not exactly sure how many is up here. I think there's 30, 15 on each side. You can also take those shields down and put different shields up there if you want. And uh, this is the main armory where you can put uh, your weapons at. You got the display cases and you also got uh, these. I only put a couple things here. That I was able to obtain. And the drain spell bow. I just put it there just because. Now this spot here is uh, where you put all your masks that you collect out there in Skyrim. Now back here, um, you got some more mannequins and weapons displays. This is where I'll put like King's armor or nobility armor if I have to um, take them out for this reason or that. This is where I'll uh, display them at. And we'll head on up. Like I said, I'm planning to, on this playthrough to uh, play through as a vampire. So I'll get Serana as a follower. And I think she's a really good follower. Um, I got some mods for her that uh, vastly improves her character, her combat AI, and a mod that gives her a ton more voice lines. The last couple of years I've been using the alternate start mod because I played this game. I've got close to 4,000 hours in this game since it launched and it just gets kind of boring after a while just riding in the cart, going to your execution, then the dragon show up, escaping and then running through the cave. So I'll just use the alternate start mod and start somewhere else. And then usually what I do is I won't come directly here. I'll run around, uh, unlock the map, and I won't really quest. I'll just uh, get as much stuff as I can, sell it to come up with the gold to uh, be able to purchase this place. And of course, while doing that, I level up my skills. By the time I do all that, I'm a high enough level where I'll just go ahead and head on over to uh, Solitude and start questing there and Sybil Centaur that's in the, the castle uh, she is a vampire and we'll head out this door here goes to the little balcony I'll just show it to you there's nothing much out here but uh, if you spend enough time with Sybil Centaur and do her quest uh, she will eventually bite you 
And then once she bites you, you get like three days to get cured uh, before you turn into a vampire or a full-blooded vampire. Now over here, you can see the, uh, the airship. It's lit up. It's kind of pretty. I will do a video uh, going from here to Solitude uh, to show you um, what I've done with the uh, with, with the forests and uh, all the changes in the graphics. All right, so like I said, it's not much here. You can see the river. You can see the bridge. You can see a piece of river wood. But then once Civil Centaur bites me, and I'm not really quite a vampire yet, I'll I'll go ahead and join the Dawn Guard, in which they will give you the quest to. Uh, Go and see what's going on, and and see so you can collect Serana, and then take her back to Castle Bulkahar. And I'll wait till I'm a vampire before I get her, because then she'll see you as a vampire. And uh, I don't know, that's just the way I've been doing it. And then I'll do all the Castle Bulkahar quests, and then move on from there, and quest to other places. I will head on down. And I was talking about uh, some of the graphics mods. I got uh, I got the Great Forest of White Run. Um, essentially, there is no more open areas like there is in the vanilla game. I mean, well, there's a few uh, fields here and there, but uh, it's it's a vast Nordic forest. And I think it fits Skyrim pretty well. And I got mods to improve the roads, snow, rain, uh, all that as well. I also have uh, a mod that introduces fairies into the game, and they're kind of neat. And then butterflies and, and birds, and I've improved uh, the look of all animals, all critters. I'll head on down this side. I'll show you, we'll come out in the kitchen area. And we'll head out to the tower. And we'll go over here. And we'll head on out. This is a very beautiful castle. Skyrim, uh, in general, is a very beautiful game. our guard. And you can see the stars. Like I said, I got uh, all the city mods and Solitude's huge now and it has a huge port. Same with Windhelm. And all the cities, Whiterun, all the major cities, Winterhold, um, I have that restored to its its former glory. And um, the college is a proper college now that uh, you would expect to find. I mean, after all, they're mages. You think that they could do a lot better. All right, here's an armory. This is the bottom floor. You got some storage here. Now these swords here, you can't actually take them down. They're, they're kind of crappy, it's just more of a decoration. But you can take them out and then replace them. Something better if you so choose to. Over here, you just got a uh, cold storage area. Or like meats and such. I guess kind of neat, they added, he added that into the game. And then here, this door takes you into the dining hall, the main keep. And over here is the uh, hatch that goes down to the basement. And we'll head on up. There's eight floors here. I also have the mod Beyond Bruma, which allows you to go to Cyrodiil and uh, 
explore and quest. It's 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 quite a big area, and there's quite a few quests here. Now we got uh, four beds here, so that's uh, makes it 21 total. We have a desk over there, of course, for store and yeah, storage there. And there's nothing over here, just uh, just a hutch and storage. And we'll head up to the third floor. We also have mods that improve uh, Solstein, the city, the island itself in general, the Skull Village. Uh, it looks much, much better. And we got four beds here. That's a total now of 25. And more storage. So, like I said, you got plenty of room for followers. And also have a mod. Um, it's called a Gray Cowl of something or others. It allows you to go to Hammerfell. And, uh,. There's quite a few quests there, and it's also quite a large area, about the same size as Beyond Bruma. And uh, over here, this leads you out to a little balcony. There's a smelter out here and, and a guard. Once it loads. Yeah, here we go. And there's our guard. And here's our smelter. And she overlooks. Um, down here, you can see. Oh, uh, that's the stables. And there's uh, Riverwood. What can I do for you? I'll do videos and give a tour of the various cities. Um, Riverwood looks pretty good now. I also have interior mods there that. Um, improve the uh, trader, the blacksmith, all the homes. I did the same thing for all the cities with the interior mods. I am running an EMB, but I'm not exactly sure which preset I'm using. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if I said, but yeah, I'm running over 3,200 mods. So took me a while to get it stable about eight months uh, tweaking it playing around with it I had to merge uh, quite a few mods all right there's two more beds here that puts us up to a total of 27 and always in this tower area if I get near a mannequin I guess it's the uh, burger point and it'll ask me for some reason it's kind of a glitch I think Nothing really there, just storage. And we'll head on up. And up here. There's not much here. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's the uh, Shrine of Mara. Got that here. I don't come over to the uh, tower much, but I will put some followers in here. I'll, I'll fill it up at the pool first, and then I'll come to the tower uh, before I put anyone in the basement. Over here. We have a couple of balconies. Let's go ahead and go on out and show them to you. And it loads eventually. All right, here we go. And you can see that's the entrance. There's uh, Riverwood over there, and you can see the uh, airship there in parts of White Run. Of course, the mount. Of course, the mountains. I 
also have uh, mods for Castle Volkahar, so after you finish all your quests there, you can restore it to its former glory and, you know, clean, clean the place up, clear out all the passageways, including the Undercroft, um, and bring it back to its former glory like you would expect to find it 500 years ago or whatnot when uh, Harkin and uh, Serana and his wife were uh, changed into vampires. And, yeah, there's, and you can also get a, uh, a ship there with a ghostly captain that will take you to all the keeps, including uh, Solstein. And this balcony, for some reason, has the longest load time. Uh, going through the door. This game is pretty timeless. I enjoy playing it. More so now since I brought everything up to improve the graphics. Made it next gen. Hey, there's, uh, you can kind of see Riverwood there. There's the entrance again. There's the river. There's not much else to see. And we'll come back inside. With the UBE body, it's difficult to find clothing. There is a Discord server uh, or page where people will uh, convert uh, clothing uh, to fit UBE bodies, but a lot of it is pretty skimpy, and it's hard to find clothing that's not. This is about the least skimpy thing I've found, uh, but there are becoming more and more uh, UBE mods um, for the uh, UBE body on uh, Nexus. All right, and we'll go up to the next floor. And that's it for the balconies. And then here's the top floor. You have two mannequins here, of course. Bookshelves. Uh, got uh, an alchemy lab. And another double bed. So I'm not sure if you can assign that to followers or not. I think I have. So that's what, 29 total, I guess. Here's the Arcane Enchanter, 28 or 29. I'm not sure if you can uh, assign two people to it or just one. And we'll head on down. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh Tour, but this is a really great home and you can find this mod on uh, Nexus. I'll link it in the description And the NPCs in the castle will keep a schedule You'll you'll find them in the dining hall for breakfast lunch and dinner and then after about eight o'clock at night they'll uh, Just go and do their own thing. I'm not sure I think they just sleep in whatever open bed there is, just randomly pick one. But they but you can sell to them twenty four hours a day or sell or buy. Um, they're not restricted like the vendors in towns. So that's kinda nice. You can come here and just completely dump all the junk out of your bags. Keep on heading down. Not sure what she's doing, reading something. Just hanging out. Oop. Yeah. Oh, here's down. Okay. Put you on down. And this over here, I'm not exactly sure what this is. Um, I'm thinking it might be one of my mods I've just forgotten about. 
but uh, it's a uh, Im- imbuer, I guess. But I'm not sure exactly what it does. But then, but and, and again, I think it's a mod. One more floor. If anybody's got any questions about uh, what mods I'm running or any anything, just send me a message and uh, I'll try. To, I will uh, do my best to help you out or explain or tell you which mods I'm using and where to get them. Yeah, and also got got mods that uh, make all the named NPCs in the game marked essential. Because I used to hate it when I'd go to like the Solitude or some city, and there'd just be some NPC that you'd like to interacting with just laying there dead. In case that does happen, I do have a a, a mod for a resurrection for a resurrection spell. And here's another good one to get. I'll show you real quick. Uh, here we go. Again, for flames. You can one shot everything with this. See, it just burns everything. It's called the Yennefer Flames. Uh, if you remember on the Witcher show, where Yennefer burned out the entire valley, I think it was the end of season two. Um, that was pretty amazing. So, there we go. That's the end of the tour. And uh, if you guys got any questions, just uh, send me a message. You all have a great day, and I'll uh, uh, see you later.